All right, have you ever just came up with an ideal and you'd be like, this is my idea. I thought about this. This is crazy. And then like a week later, somebody thinking the same thing or saying the same thing. You see somebody doing the exact same thing. It's a science behind it, a collective consciousness behind it. Let me explain. Check this out. All right, this book right here is called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. I'm not going to slaughter this name, but let me try it. Junajit Melchizedek or something like that. Right? Okay. In this book... All right. In this book, they did this thing called the hundred. This is called this is called the hundred monkey theory. It says on the island of Kashima, Japan, they had a wild colony of monkeys. Um, they were providing them with sweet potatoes dropped in sand. The monkeys liked the sweet potatoes, but not the sand and dirt. An 18 month old female they named Emo found she could solve the problem by washing the potatoes. She taught this trick to her mother. Her playmates also learned this new way and then taught their mothers too. Soon all the young monkeys washed their sweet potatoes, but only the, only the adults who imitated their children learned this behavior the scientists recorded these events between the years 1952 and 1958 then suddenly in the autumn of 1958 the few monkeys doing this on the island of Kashima reached a critical mass which dr watson archibaldly placed at 100 and bingo almost every monkey on the island started washing its potatoes without any further influence it had happened only that one island they probably would have figured there was some form of communication and looked for it but simultaneously the monkeys on the surrounding islands also started washing their potatoes even on the mainland of japan in tasayaki the monkeys were watching their potatoes there was no possible way these monkeys could have communicated by any way we know it was the first time that scientists have ever observed anything like this they postulated that there must have been some kind of morphogenetic structure or field that stretched across these islands through which the monkeys were able to communicate y'all do y'all get what they just said they said at first the only way that the monkeys could learn about the potato thing was the kids had to teach the mother monkeys but by the end of the 1958 every island on them every monkey on the island knew how to wash their potatoes off and then after that they was like okay that's cool they must have just talked to each other about it but then they went to all the surrounding islands and found out that monkeys that wasn't washing their potatoes off at first now was washing their potatoes off which shows that there's some type of connected collected consciousness of ideas and that's why when you see dance crazes back in the 50s and 40s, when people had no contact with each other, you might see somebody do a dance over here, here called the Booga Wooga, and it looked exactly as the Ooga Looga in another area because there's a collective consciousness amongst us all. So when you're thinking one idea, it's not just coming to you, it's coming to the people that all are sensitive enough with the right antenna on to get those ideas. And that's what happened with this, um, project on this on this island in japan they seen that the monkeys only emulated each other after they all got the same